All right, what's going on everybody? I need a drum roll because I'm super stoked because for like the last two months I've been living under a rock. Under a rock really means I've been working on a project. Now, when I came out with the remix, really that frame was more for me. I just wanted something that, you know, everything that I wanted in a frame. But now I've been working on something that's more for you guys. Now, I want to see more people post fight videos. Why do you think people don't post more videos? Flying something with the GoPro just costs too much. I mean, the GoPro is a couple hundred dollars. Building a GoPro rig is going to cost you some money. And then when you've got something that big, because let's face it, that's going to be like a five or six inch frame, you've got a lot of mass in the air with a whole lot of money. Things break and your wallet starts to hate you. And because of that, you tend to fly a little bit more conservatively. And let's face it, if you're going to become a better pilot, you can't be holding back. You got to go all out and try all that epic stuff because that's really the only way that you're gonna get better. So I said, all right, the GoPro rig, in my opinion, is a lot like the guy that's going out there to buy the DSLR. There's the pro option out there. I feel like we need a point and shoot HD offering here where it's just really simple and straightforward. You turn the thing on, you go fly, capture your footage, and it's done. Enter the Acrobrat, and I'm gonna show you the Acrobrat right now. Here it is, in all its goodness. Here is a production version. And so with that, I started looking at the Runcam Split Mini. Now, the more I looked into this, the more it just started to make sense. This is really where this industry should be going. It's a single camera that does all of the HD recording responsibilities, but it also serves as your FPV analog feed. We should be pushing these guys to keep developing on this and improving that. I wanted to also aim for that 250 gram mark. Governments just like that number. Apparently anything under that 250 gram mark does not fall into the regulations that most governments in various countries adhere to. So now that we know exactly what we're building for, I wanted to just quickly touch upon how we go about you know, our design process. And really it starts off with a couple of CAD designs. So we have several iterations that live in the digital world. And from that bunch, we select a few and we decide to go ahead and move them up to the next step, 3D printing the actual frame. We decide one that actually gets cut out in carbon. And then from that point on, we go into the refinement process. Flying it, crash testing it, finding out what breaks, making adjustments until we are happy with the results. You know, once we get these built, it kills me, but I gotta do it. I, I start doing different things to do the crash testing. Oh my gosh, this tree is straight bleeding. Head on crash into a tree, which that, that broke something by the way. We've been able to repeat that head on crash into a tree and not break anything. We just take it to the point of what it's gonna take to actually break at the point now where I'm just chucking the quad up against the wall because it was it, at that point I had seized the motors from all the crash testing I did. Still haven't broke the frame and it took three tries up against that concrete wall of me just full force chucking it like I'm Mark McGuire. Is Mark McGuire, I, I'm probably showing my age by saying Mark McGuire so I'm not going to say. I'm not saying that this frame is indestructible guys because there's definitely going to be somebody out there that's going to figure out how to break this frame but I am going to say it can take a hit enough for you to be able to not hold back with your flying and that is the main thing that I was going after here. So as we started this process around the run cam split mini, biggest glaring issue that we ran into was the issue of jello. Vibrations reaching that camera enough to give that little jello looking effect and it just kind of distracts from what you're seeing. Now that jello problem has been a pretty common thing or if, if, when I look at all the people building three inch micros. I'm not saying it's impossible to build a three inch micro rig and not have that jello. It's certainly possible but what we're trying to address here is what I'm just gonna call the jello threshold. You know the vibrations reach a certain level say here you start to see jello in the footage. With the Acrobrat, you can actually tune this now. So, so this is gonna be the first frame out there where you can try and tune out the jello. And what we're trying to do is basically increase that jello threshold. You've now got a wider range of things, uh, motors and prop combos that you could use. What the Acrobrat frame does and the features that I'll get into here in a second allows you to do is just kind of get away with a lot bigger window where that jello disappears. Let's get into just a little bit of the detail about why this mitigates jello. What we did was reintroduce a concept called a clean and dirty section. And really it's not a new concept, but what it is is you're taking the section of the multi-rotor that generates all of the noise and vibrations and separate it from the clean section where your camera is supposed to be. And what that really boils down to is you have a dampening material plus a mass offset to counteract that 
jello or the vibrations hitting that camera. So on this frame, we've taken something that's very similar to what you see with flight controller grommets. And this area here, the top section, is what we're gonna call the clean section. And it's got this bushing right here. Now this bushing is actually a custom proprietary bushing that we've got because when we were trying to solve for this, what we actually did was we took some off the shelf grommets that you could find at a hobby store or even a computer store. And we saw a mild improvement, but enough of an improvement for us to start thinking, okay, maybe we just need to play with the thickness and the size of this grommet and maybe it'll work even better. And so that's exactly what we did. We also made them in varying shore hardnesses. So that way we can find out what was going to be the hardness or shore rating that was going to mitigate Jello the best. And so we came out with these black ones, which are rated at 70, blue ones, which are rated at 60, the red ones are rated at 50, and finally down to the bottom, which are the clear or white ones, which are rated at 40. Now the lower the number, the softer the material is. We don't know, I don't have any data, I don't think anybody really has any data that says, okay, if you're running 1407 motors and three inch props, you're gonna be generating these types of vibrations on this type of frame, so you're gonna need the blue ones. We just don't have that data. Me personally, all of the grommets worked fine on my 1407 motors on HQ props. The test pilots, they all had varying different motors and they had a wide spectrum of feedback. Everything from the white ones were horrible, but the black ones were great, or the red and blue ones both worked equally fine for me, but the blue ones had a much higher threshold. In fact, there's one guy, Brad McManus FPV, you see him just crash into something, flips it right back over, continues flying, and it's still jello free. Now try that with a hard mounted or rigid frame. With all of that said, we've got an introductory offer for the very first batch of Acrobrats. It's going to include all of these grommets. What we need is your help to give feedback to this community and help us figure out, is there one that's gonna work out best for all of them? Because then the second batch is gonna have that color grommet. Or maybe we're gonna limit it down to one or two. If you are one of the lucky few to get in on the first batch, you're gonna get all of the grommets and we're asking for your help to go to www.acrobrat.com and send us your feedback. Let us know what motors you're running, what props you're running, and the temperature that you're at because that actually plays an important role. And then finally, tell us which color grommet worked best for you so that way we could build up a nice little database and provide this back to future buyers so that they know which color grommets will work best for them or we can figure out which color grommets to include for subsequent batches of the Acro brand. Now back to my earlier point about temperature. Why is that important? If you live in a climate where it's colder, these softer ones will probably work better because when this gets colder, it gets stiffer. But if you live in a hotter climate, you might wanna use the black ones or even these blue ones because these are stiffer and once it gets hot, this becomes a little bit softer. So let's take a look actually at a couple of the iterations in our prototypes. Now we went through several prototype iterations, made several designs, but I'm, I'm picking out a couple of these because I just wanted to point out really quickly a couple of things. So first I want you to take a look at, here's, here's, the, uh, here's the production, here's the final. It's got a lot more of a slope. And then look at one of our first iterations. That's doesn't have that much of a slope, the camera's pushed forward because I wanted to try and get as much of the prop out of view as possible. However, I still had a little bit of props in view, but more importantly, the, the CG, in order to get the CG right, the battery had to sit somewhere close to here in order for it to balance out. I, I didn't like that. And the reason is because something that I learned from designing the Remix is the whole theory of having centered mass. The next design pushed the everything a little bit farther back. Now the battery actually sits, and this it doesn't matter what battery that you're running. It could be a 650 or 450, 3S or 4S, but it sits perfectly center to the frame. Let's talk about the rest of the frame. So here is the frame itself. And what you'll notice, it's got a unibody base plate. That base plate is three millimeters in thickness. The side plates holding the clean section is made out of two millimeter plates. And then you've got this battery plate in the middle made out of 1.5 millimeter carbon. And what you'll see, let me just show you one of the prototypes here. This is actually how you hook the lipo strap. It's not your typical clasp where you loop it through that and then go around the battery. It's just on two sides, one on this side, one on this side, it'll come with the strap. It's also gonna come with a piece of um grip to keep your battery from sliding off. In addition to making these custom bushings, we said, well, hey, we might as well integrate 
flight controller soft mounting into the frame. As you can see here, FC grommets built into the main plate and that is where your flight controller is gonna go. And just like the bushings for the clean and dirty section, we're also including different shore hardnesses for those as well just so that you can also fine tune your flight controller soft mount. That'll also help with oscillations and uh, you know increase your flight performance. So this is gonna be made out of a three millimeter plain weave Torre carbon motor to motor distance. It is coming in at 164 millimeters. That is from here to here. This is a TrueX configuration. The motor to motor distance, 164 millimeters. It's a little bit wider than what you would expect for a three inch, but that is the secret to it feeling and flying like a five inch, where the battery placement is lower to the ground, and that is what's giving it more stability. Uh, in fact, all of the beta testers sat there, they all agreed it, it definitely feels and flies like a five inch, minus the power difference, of course, and to me, that's really important. The motor mounting bolt pattern is made for a 12 by 12 motor mounting pattern. I recommend 1306, 1307, 1407, 1408, no problem. As long as it's got a 12 by 12 mounting pattern, you could bolt it up into this bad boy. There are three 20 by 20 mounting sections for all of your components. So this first set up front is going to be for your run cam split mini board. The set of 20 by 20 mountain holes in the middle is going to be for your flight controller and ESC stack. And the one in the back is going to be for your VTX and your receiver and there is plenty of space to mount all of that stuff you can even mount a full-size vtx such as a tramp uh, or even a unified so let's take a look at what that looks like in action so here is a prototype frame and as you can see up front the split mini board is up front you have easy access to the usb you flip it over you've got easy access to the sd card you push that pops right out push it back in and you're golden in the middle is where your flight controller and esc stack goes you flip it right over you've got access to that usb port and then in the back i've got a 20 by 20 vtx back there with an fr sky receiver mounted right on top and as you can see there is plenty of space for you to mount all the things and one more thing because one of the beta testers actually pointed this out there is enough space to put a second camera on here i don't know how i feel about that because again the way this should go is one single camera but let's just say that you don't like the fpv performance of the run cam split mini latency is not a problem i'll tell you that right now but what it doesn't do as well as some of these other cameras such as say a micro swift is the whole light transition. So when you go from light to dark, it does take a little bit longer than the rest. And if that's a problem for you, you can even put a camera in there. That's how much space there is in here. 3D print manufacturers, they're already working on 3D print accessories, everything from motor skids, because you're gonna definitely want something to protect the bottom of the of the frame, to motor end guards, to a, you know, a front bumper protection up front, as well as some mounting solutions for your antennas out back. So last but not least, because I mean it's an it's an important part how much does this thing weigh all the nuts and bolts bushings and grommets and we are coming in at 54 grams so not the lightest frame in the world but keep in mind it is a freestyle frame and I wanted it to be durable and I wanted it to still have some heft because I want it to fly like a five inch when I develop a product I like to live it and breathe it and that meant that I had to set my remix aside, my five inch quad aside, and just focus on nothing but the acro bread. You know, I gotta say, I actually don't miss the remix. I'm still gonna continue to fly the remix, but for your everyday stuff, you know, it is so convenient to just have this in my backpack. In fact, I'm carrying a smaller backpack and I could fit two of these inside. I could fit 16 batteries, which by the way, charging batteries takes a fraction of the time now because I'm not charging these massive 5S 1300 batteries. It's just a lot less gear and a lot more portable gear to carry around. And what I've been finding is now I'm flying a lot more often because everywhere where I used to either not fly because the five inch is just not optimal, I'm taking this guy out. One of my favorite things about this is that fly spots that have been kind of played out or just exhausted is a whole new experience. It's, it's kind of like finding a whole new level in that game that you've been playing forever and everything is exciting again. Gaps, hitting gaps with this thing is awesome because it's tiny. Things are less likely to break. It really allows me to just kind of unleash and go hard. That, guys, really is what makes you a better pilot. So I'm looking forward to what you guys 
think I'm looking forward to seeing all of the videos. Join us on this movement on the Acro Brat. We're gonna be holding a whole bunch of contests. Be sure to check out that Facebook group, the Acro Brats. All of the beta testers are there. The team pilots are gonna be there. And uh, it's just gonna be a great place to share experiences, share your setup, and really push forward this whole movement that we've got going on. So I'm really excited for you guys to have it. I'm gonna go take this and go fly because no one's gonna hear me. No one's gonna really care, so peace out. Yo.